the while loop so you have to write here while logical expression logical expression you have to write down colon and then here you write down the loops body loop what fine so the while loop is the while loop is a conditional loop is a conditional loop that will appear that will appear uh, or that will uh, repeat that will repeat the instructions within itself within itself within itself as long as as long as long as a condition remains true a condition so this is a basic idea regarding a while loop say for example say for example if i go to uh, idle so so instead of idle i'm going to use here vs code or you people also try to install vs code in your machine so let me show you how to install vs code in your computer fine so first what i will do here okay, let me uninstall my vs code okay so i'll go to uh, setting and i'll go to apps okay then i click on here and then i will search for vs code because i want to uh, remove it because it is already there oh, let me let me not remove it it let it be there uh, you will install it it's very easy vs code uh, you go to the chrome it's very easy uh, you need to it's very easy to install so you go to uh, chrome and type here visual studio code you type here visual studio u d i o studio code right just type visual studio code right press enter it will uh, the first option is code.visualstudio.com so go to the website right and you click on download for windows if you are using a windows machine it will automatically uh say that ki it's windows if it is a mac machine it will automatically say to you mac and if it is linux it will automatically say you to the linux right so now what you can do you can uh, click on this download for windows and uh, you will see that ki a download file will appear say uh, this is a download file which is appearing here all right so i am saving it in my downloads right so it is downloaded it is 61.1 mb file and it is downloaded right my internet is very fast so it downloaded within a second all right so now what i am going to do here ke okay, i'll click on show in folder so i clicked on uh, show in folder okay so now you can see that ke okay, this uh, vs code user setups x64 1.5.0.exe so this is the older exe so i am removing the older exe and now what i will do i will double click on it it will start installing right so setup has detected that visual studio code is currently running right please go close all the instances at now and then click okay to continue so let me close this so let me cancel it and let me close and now what i will do here ke uh yeah i'll go here and i double click on it right and uh, and i click on i accept agreement right you have to accept the agreement and if you have time then you can read all this but i am i have already read this agreement so uh, i just scroll it down and i accept the agreement and click on next right and and you click on uh, if these options are not clicked then you select all the options you select all the options and evenly you can cl click on create a desktop icon option right and then click on next right then click on install okay so it is showing that ki please wait uh, while setup 
installs the visual studio code on your computer so now what it will do it will install the visual studio code so this installation will take a minute or two to install in your computer okay then you click on finish so you clicked on finish okay and uh, now what i'm going to do here okay now i'm going to close this out right i'm going to close this out then what you would you will do say for example uh, you need to create a folder right you go to your drive and you create a folder say for example i have created a folder here new folder right and i'm i'm writing the name of this folder as say python programs python right say python uh, say you can write python projects also p r o j e c t s projects with say i'm writing python projects with my student so i have created a project here so now you enter into this folder okay so after entering into this folder right you will right click on it right so when you right click on it you will get this pop up right in this pop up you will get an option open with code right so when you click on this when you click on this visual studio code will open so now you can see that k here python projects with uh, my student this folder is open right and close the welcome uh, part uh, now you close the welcome part now when you go when you uh, when you see this there are four icons over here one is the plus right new file this is for new folder right this is the refresh explorer and this is the collapse right so what do you do here k okay, you click on new file okay so when you click on new file this this thing will appear so here you write down i'm just writing down because i'm going to explain you while loop so i'm writing here while while demo dot py right so and you press enter key okay so now it will create a file while demo dot py so now you can write down a code here say for example i have written here a code like this okay say for example i have written n equal to 10 and here i have written while while n is greater than while n is greater than 0 and then i am writing here print i have written this and then what i am doing here i am writing here n equal to n minus 1 right so it this program will print this program will print a welcome to python 10 times right and uh, when you do this because in my uh, computer the dependencies are installed right so you will find that ki in your computer dependencies are not installed so they will give you here some message right and you install all the files whatever it is required vs code will give it to you to install right in my computer dependencies are already installed because i have taught other students by using the same computer okay so all the dependencies requiring python is installed right so what you have to do here okay to execute this code all right you click on terminal you click on terminal and you click on new terminal all right and you can click on there are uh, options we are getting here run task uh, run build task right run active file so evenly if you do this then also you can find that k a terminal is appearing all right and it is going to execute the program so to execute the you have to do you have to write here python and you name the file while demo dot py okay and when i press enter key it will start executing oh it didn't execute it. so here i have given n greater than 0 print welcome to python so it will print python 10 times maybe uh, what happens ke i may not have saved the file so let me save it right so after saving the file whatever changes you do in the file you always have to save i didn't saved it so that is why it is not printing now you can see that it is it has printed it so any changes needs to be saved i didn't saved it and
was writing the command for execution so when so whenever you you are doing performing any changes you should save it right and if you didn't if you didn't save your program here it will show you the message that it didn't it didn't saved it say for example here i have written welcome to python so now what i have to do i have to save this right so i saved it and uh, now what i will will do i will execute this it will execute so it will it's executing welcome to python python is easy welcome to python and python is easy so here these three statements are repeated print this print this print and this n is equal to n minus 1 right so these things were uh, repeated so visual studio code help us to write the program and execute the program very easily and it is a very convenient way to write python programs right so now you can see that k okay, here these two these three these three statements are repeated are repeated for 10 times for 10 times all right so because the value of n is 10 so 10 is greater than 0 it will print this it will execute this and then it will reduce the value of n so the value of n will become 10 minus 1 9 so again the control will go back here and it will check okay this condition is true or not if it is true then it will execute this this and this and when it is false when it is false right then your control will come down to this position as there is no command is written then program will stop automatically right so this is how a while loop works and uh, this is called the body of the loop also so i hope this idea is clear to everyone so the next thing which we are going to learn is that k java jump statements like break and continue so first i will teach you the break statement the break statement enables the break statement the break statement statement enables enables a program to skip over to skip over a part of code a part of code a break statement it lies within it lies at the statement at the statement body of the body of the terminated statements so the break statement enables the program to skip the part of code a break statement terminates the very loop it lies within and execution re resumes at the statement immediately following the body of the terminated statements fine so let's uh, let's see uh, the syntax is ki how uh, this works right so let me write here while a uh, test statement to and uh, then we have if condition then you have break break and then you have statements uh, statement 5 so what will happen over here ke what will happen ke uh, your control is executing like this this when this condition is true the control jumps directly to this statement right so here we can say that ke the loop is terminated loop loop terminates or loop termi it's all right the same thing happens in the for loop also right if we write here for then we have a uh, statement 1 and uh, we have if if this condition is true then we have break and uh, then we have a uh, statement 2 then we have statement 3 and uh, we have say we have statement 4 and uh, statement 5 so same thing happens over here also k okay, when this condition is true when this is true then this break will execute and it will take the control out of the loop so this is the this statement is actually immediate statement after the for loop right so the here the loop terminates 
So let me show you a few examples like this. We'll go to VS Code and we click on this file and we create examples. So here I'm writing here A is equal to say 10. I'm writing here B is equal to and I'm writing here Y. A is less than equal to dot pi. So that is why the color have not not changed. So now the color has changed. Now I can type it here. So I'm writing here and then I'm writing one condition. If uh, I'm writing here, if B divided by if B divided by five is not equal to zero and or if b divided by 5 equal to equal to 0 and i have written here and uh, instead of b i'm you going to use a and a a modulus of a modulus of 10 is equal to equal to 5 and i will break from the and otherwise what i will do i will write here a is equal to a plus 1 so i will uh, proceed like this a is equal to a plus 1 so let me make it uh, more fun with a is equal to a plus 3 all right and uh, i'll continue like that so now what i will do here i will write here print this is the last value of a so i'm writing here last value equal to placing one comma over here so that will be the last value of a right that will be printed so let me execute this code and let's see what is going to be happen okay so first i need to save it right and then i will write here python break demo dot pi so now you can see that kit has printed 10 13 16 19 22 and then when it reaches 25 the break statement encountered and the last value of uh, last value of a is 25 right so let me write here last value of a of a let me save it here and let me execute it once again and you can see that the last value of a is 25 got my point how the break is working so it has not completed the loop so it has stopped in between right so let me take this example this is the output right this is the output of the above code so let's try with uh, break with four also so i don't have to open the idle to do this now let's create uh, another uh, file here break with four with dot pi so now it will create another file and here i am writing so let me copy this code and uh, solve it using four okay so i copied it and i pasted it and uh, here instead of while i am writing here for 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 uh, a in or uh, a in a range so if i want to include 50 i have to write here 51 okay and uh, here i have to write uh, step is three so if i write this then i don't need this statement i don't need this statement and i don't need this uh, a and so i'm saving it and now you can see the output it will generate the same output all right uh, with for break now you can see that it has generated the same state same output right so now you can see that okay, these two codes are generating the same output okay so let me place it here this code and this code will generate the same output so these two codes we can say that okay, these two codes are equivalent codes these two codes are equivalent codes right so we can uh, write down the program using while loop as well as we can write down the program in the for loop right so this is these two codes are equivalence code okay 
because they generate similar output right so the next topic is the continue statement right such a break statement is very much useful uh, in a programs like where we have where we don't know the number of inputs right it is very much useful with the infinite loop all right let me show you one example say for example i have to write down a code say for example i have to write down a program uh, write a program oh, i'm sorry you write a program in python to input input a set of a set of numbers and print the sum of sum of even positive even positive even even positive positive and and odd positive odd positive and count and count the number of negative numbers the number of negative numbers negative numbers numbers and uh, press and uh, press and press zero and press zero to stop the program and see the output stop the execution stop the execution and check the output this kind of code will be written with the help of an infinite loop right so what is infinite loop please write on the screen on the chat window please write it on the chat window what is the infinite loop yes sir in which the condition is when the condition invalid or not given right so that is an infinite loop so that is a uh, very much useful right a loop becomes infinite loop if the condition never becomes false correct fine so let me create this program you go here and click on this and uh, type uh, infinite loop demo what by so we create another python file and here we write we can write uh, we can use while loop or we uh, yeah we can use while loop it is very easy to create infinite loop and we write here simply true uh, true is written now i'm writing here uh, say n is equal to integer of input so now you can take input any number now you check okay, if n is greater than if n is greater than Uh, zero. That means that number is positive. Okay. Then you need to check uh, key whether it is even or odd. So if n modulus of two double equal to zero, that means that number is even number. So I have to find out the even sum. So I will write here even sum, even sum plus equal to n. Okay. So I have to write that. and then i'm going to write here else okay i have to declare a few variables here like uh, i have to write here even sum equal to 0 i have to declare odd sum equal to 0 and i have to declare uh, count negative count negative g at count negative equal to 0 so we go here and we continue if uh, n is greater than 0 if n modulus of 2 equal to equal to 0 else else so we write here odd sum plus equal to n fine and uh, then here we write down else let me indent it properly and here we write it down uh, negative so count negative plus equal to 1 so here we have counted the negative values and uh, now what we can do here ke uh, our job our main thing main logic is done so after completion of when uh, i have not written the condition here uh, i have to write here l if l if n is less than 0 
right? If the value of n is less than zero, then count negative. Otherwise, otherwise else, uh, you break the loop. You break the loop, right? So after the loop, we can simply print, print. Uh, here we write down uh, even sum, even sum is plus, uh, not plus, comma, uh, even sum, even sum. Okay, and here I will write print, and here we can write it down, uh, odd sum, and here we can write it down, odd sum. Okay, and then you write it down print, total number of negative values, total uh, number of, total number of negative, number of negative values, uh, total number of negative values is, comma and uh, uh, how many negative values are there? Uh, negative values are count negative. So I hope uh, we have done this uh, program. So let me save it and we try to execute this code over here. So we write here Python and uh, then we write down infinite loop demo and we press enter key. So enter any number. So I have entered here say one, then enter any number. I have entered two, then I entered any number. I have entered three. Then enter any number I have entered four. Then enter any number I have entered minus five. Right? So let me execute this code by pressing. <coughs> let me close this loop by pressing zero. So I press zero and you can see that key everything is closed. So even sum is six because four plus two is six and odd sum is four. One plus three is four. Right? So total number of negative value is one because I have entered only one negative value which is minus five. So this is how a uh, break statement is useful when you are creating an infinite loop, right? So when when you don't know okay, when to exit, then it is better to use infinite loop and uh, that means key that will exit after a certain condition uh, when the condition is satisfied. OK, so this is the story of infinite. So here we write down the topic of infinite. So a loop becomes infinite if the condition never becomes false when the condition invalid or not given, right? So in which the condition is always true. Yes, a loop, a loop, a loop in which condition is, condition is always true, always true, true is called infinite loop, is called infinite infinite loop right so this is a, uh, a question and uh, here let me copy the code and we copy the output here also so this is the uh, break statement so next statement is yeah let me uh, actually i'm today i'm revising it so that K, because everyone is combined today uh, the uh, sunday's sunday's batch and the monday's batch so let me I'm revising it today and I will give you some homework today right from today. So you try it. It will OK. So the next thing is the continue statement. So the continue statement is another jump statement is another jump statement like. The break statement as both the statement meant skips over a part of a part of code. But continue statement, uh, continue statement, continue statement. But the continue statement is somewhat, somewhat different from of forcing. Instead of forcing termination, instead of forcing termination, the continue statement is somewhat different from break instead of forcing termination instead of forcing termination the continue statement forces the forces the next iteration of the loop of the loop to take place to take place skipping any code in between so this is the story about continue statement okay so let me show you one demo regarding continue statement. 
So the continue statement is basically another jump statement like the break statement as both the statement skips over the part of uh, continue statement skips over the part of the code, but the continue statement is somewhat different from break. Instead of forcing termination, the continue statement is somewhat different from break. I have written it twice. Instead of forcing termination, the uh, no, no. Instead of forcing termination, the continue statement is somewhat different from the break. Uh, instead of forcing termination, the continue statement forces the next iteration of the loops to take place, skipping the code in between. So let me show you the syntaxes. So if you write here, so you can see here instead of break, I have to write here continue. The same thing happens here in in break. The control is going down and here in continue the control will go to here, right? The control will go to. This place and it will continue for the continue with the next sequence of values. It will continue with the next sequence of values, right? So uh, let me uh, write it uh, one sample program. One with the for and one with the y. I'm writing here. Say i is equal to one. Then here I'm writing while i is less than equal to say ten. Okay. And I want to skip the way. I don't want to print the values. Uh, say I don't want to print the value six. Right, or uh, I I don't want to print the value six and seven, or six, seven, and eight. I don't want to print six, seven, and eight. I want to print one, two, three, four, five, then nine and ten. Right? Then what I have to do here? So let me write here i i is equal to zero, and here I'm writing i equal to i plus one, i plus one. Right? And here I'm writing if if i is greater than equal to 6 right and and i is less than equal to 8 okay then what i will do i will write here continue continue right okay and uh, then i'm writing here print i so this is a very simple uh, code and it will display the value 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, and then it will not display 6, 7 and 8 because of continue because print I will be uh, will be skipped when continue will execute. OK, so the print I will ex uh, will not execute when continue will execute and it will continue for the next iteration. OK, so let me execute this code. Yeah. So I'll write here Python and then I will write continue. There may be some issues with continue demo, continue demo with while.py. Continue C O N T I N U E demo with right now. You can see that it has printed 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, uh, 11. 11 has also printed because the value of i is less than equal to 10. So 10 is less than equal to 10. It is true. So the value of i will become 11 and it will print the value 11 also. OK, so when the value of i is 11, then it will come out of the loop. All right. So this is the code for while and it is generating the output. So this is the output and let me write down the code by using the for loop. Similar code, but continue with the for loop. So let me write here. Continue new with for loop with so I'm writing the same code so I'm copying it so instead of this what I'm going to do here okay I'm going to delete all this and uh, this will be for and here I will use same I and uh, here I will write in uh, range all right say one one comma and uh, 11 Right, so I have written here 12 because uh, I have to uh, take till 11, right? And uh, I've just removed uh, i is equal to i plus 1, and it will because it will automatically generate a sequence from 1 to 11, and then it will take the decision for the continuation. Okay, 
So let me save this code and let me execute this code we right here Python uh, with for loop or loop dot by or loop dot by. Now you can see this it generated the similar output. So this is the equivalent code of the while loop. So why I'm teaching you all these because in exam, right? They they will give you this kind of statement that key. They will give you while loop and you need to convert the while loop into for loop. And sometimes they will give you for loop. You need to convert into while loop, right? So these two uh, programs or these two group of statements are equivalent. Are equivalent. So let me uh, go go to another concept here that is called. So we have converted, uh, we have learned uh, for loop, we have learned while loop, we have learned uh, break, we have learned continue, and we are now we are going to learn loop else statement, right? So this this is something special, right? This is the this is called loop else statement. The else the loop else clause, uh, loop clause, the loop else clause clause. In Python, in Python, the loop else clause in Python executes executes when the loop terminates. When the loop terminates, when the loop terminates normally, loop terminates normally. That is that is when test condition when test condition results into results into false for a while for a while loop or for loop for loop has executed for loop has executed the last value of the sequence the last value of the sequence and it will not execute it will not execute it will not when when the break statement terminates the loop when the break statement so this is a story of a loop else statement fine so let me show you how it works so we copy uh, something like this let me copy the no, this is containing the break and what will happen over here <coughs> Okay. Uh, what will happen here? Okay. If if my loop is exiting from this point, if my loop, if my loop is exiting from this point, right? My loop is exiting from this point. Then the else statement will execute. So let me write here. So when this condition is when when all the sequence exhausted when the last value of sequence executed when the last value of the sequence executed right then the control then the control will jump to the else statement here all right and when break encounters and when the break encounters it will not at all execute the statement right when this statement executes the control will come to the statement 5 the control will come to the statement 5 it will not execute the else right so similarly when this condition will become false when this condition is false when this condition is false it will execute the else statement right and when this condition is when the break statement encounters when the break statements executes then the control will directly jump to statement number six all right so this is the concept of uh, else statement in the loop okay so let me show you one uh, one or two examples uh, regarding this one with the four and one with the we are here and we write here loop uh, or we can write here loop else statement loop else with while with while let me write here uh, write it here say i is equal to uh, say one while 
pi is less than equal to and here you are writing here you are writing if modulus of equal to is equal to zero and uh, then you are writing here break and uh, this bracket is not required a plus equal to six fine and uh, we are writing here else and here we are writing print the else executed and uh, here i am writing print the final value of i so this is the code so let me save this and execute this code so i'll write here python and i'll write here loop else with y dot pi dot pi now you can see that k it has executed the else clause 1 7 13 19 the else clause executed because none of the values is divided by 6 right so this condition is not true so that is why it is uh, executed it has executed all the values because the value of i is 1 so 1 plus 6 is 7 7 plus 6 is 13 13 plus 6 is 19 right 19 plus 6 is 25 25 plus 6 is 31 31 plus 6 is 37 37 plus 6 is 43 43 plus 6 is 49 49 plus 6 is 55 61 67 73 79 so if i add uh, if i start with one and uh, if i add six get any value which is close to uh, which will divide this right if i if i put here two right so now there is a bright chance that i may get a value which uh, is divisible by six right so two plus six is eight eight plus six is 14 14 plus six is 20 right so in that case also i'm not getting any value which is close to which is going to divide the uh, divide uh, which in that case also the condition will become true now you can see this uh, let me let me take the output first let me copy the code first so if i put here uh, two uh, or three even if i put three six plus three is nine nine plus six is 15 15 plus six is 21 21 plus six is 27 27 plus six is 33 33 plus six is 39 39 plus 6 is 45 so uh, let me put here 4 uh, let me put here uh, let me put here 6 or 4 4 plus 6 is 10 10 plus 6 is 16 16 plus 6 is 22 28 34 40 46 52 58 58 64 no it will not come uh, 6 so let me put here uh, let me put here 5 and let me put here 5 and let me put here 50 okay and let's see the output okay Control s and we execute this so now you can see that k the loop breaks because 5 10 15 20 25 30 so 30 is divisible by 6 and the loop breaks so it has not executed the else statement in this scenario right but i have changed now the code here so this is the output so this is the code right so this is how it uh, works so let me show you one one demo with the for loop also it works very much similar in the for loop also okay so let me create another file here for uh, loop else with four uh, loop else uh, what i'm going to do here i'm going to create a for loop here so i'll write here for i in uh, range i in range and the starting value is uh, five and the ending value is say 51 because i want to include 50 okay so and i want to remove this and i will write this so this is a very simple code it's very very much similar code 
and here the else will not execute okay so i'm writing here control uh, sorry loop else with for loop with for loop now you can see that k5 and 6 has executed right because the val the value will start from 5 5 then 6 then 7 then 8 in that way so here only two values were printed 5 and 6 so 6 the modulus of 6 is 0 right and if i put here comma 6 okay or i'm adding 5 with 5 i'm adding 5 with 5 so now you can see the similar kind of a situation Okay. So now you can see the final value of i is 30. So let me copy this code first. Control A, Control C, and here we put. Okay. So this code and this code is going to be equivalent code. So these two are equivalent code. These two are equivalent code. because they are going to produce the similar kind of the output i hope uh, loop else concept is clear for you people so the next concept is the nested loops the next concept is the nested so a loop may contain uh, a loop a loop may contain may contain another loop another loop in its body in its sir y25 it is 19 to sir sir can you explain the previous code again uh okay which code this code the current for loop which i have explained the previous uh with while loop with while loop right uh, okay the first value of i is 5 right the first value of i is 5 5 is less than equal to 50 it will print 5 okay and 5 modulus of 6 is not equal to 0 so it will the condition is not true the value of i will be updated by 5 the value of i will become 10 so again it will go back to the loop right again it will go back to the loop right it will go back from this position to this position right the value of i is 10 so 10 is less than equal to 5 50 sorry 10 is less than equal to 50 so it will print 10 so this 10 modulus of 6 is again not equal to 0 so the condition is false because 10 modulus of 6 is 4 4 is not equal to 0 the condition is false so it will come down here again and uh, 10 plus 5 is 15 so it will go back here so 15 is less than equal to 50 so it will print 15 right so 15 modulus of 6 is 3 so condition is false so it will come down here 15 plus 5 is 20 so again it will go back here so 20 is less than equal to 50 so print i so it will print 20 so 20 modulus of 6 is 2 right so condition is false so this uh, 20 plus 5 is 25 so it will go back here so 25 is less than equal to 50 so so this condition is true then it will print 25 now the value uh, 25 modulus of 6 is 1 right so the condition is false so 25 plus 5 is 30 30 is less than equal to 50 condition is true it will print 30 right 30 modulus of 6 is 0 so this condition is true it will break so break means it will jump over here the final value of i is 30 i hope it is clear now or see the video again yes shiny your idea is clear or i am very fast okay fine or you can see the video again to to make it more clear okay fine <clears throat> so what i'm doing here so the nested loop the loop may contain another loop in its uh, body in its but in nested loop but in nested loop in nested loop the inner loop the inner loop the inner loop is called a nested loop right the inner loop the inner loop must terminate must terminate 
before the outer loop the outer fine so let me show you one example here so for example i'm writing a loop so i have written here i i is j j equal to say 1 and uh, i have written here y j is less than equal to say 5 all right and uh, then i am writing here again i uh, let me write here k k is equal to 1 fine and then i am writing here y nested loop loop demo dot by okay so control v and i'm writing here so j equal to 1 j is less than equal to 5 while j is less than equal to sorry not j while k is less than equal to j and then i am writing here print k and uh, print one space also and print one space okay then i am just writing print and i'm not writing inside anything and uh, here i am writing k plus equal to 1 okay and after this i am writing j plus equal to 1 okay so let's uh, save this code and see the output right unexpected indentation uh, now i think it is correct because indentation is very much important in uh, python okay so let's write here python and we write here nested loop demo dot py so now you can see that kit has printed uh, this mm, no i uh, i did not targeted this output but uh, let me show you let me give a change here here we write down end equal to space control s and uh, let me execute it once again and now you can see there is a right angle triangle this is what uh, this is the output which i targeted right so it will print a right angle triangle and it is printing the numbers like 1 1 2 1 2 3 1 2 3 4 and 5 okay so let me explain you this code in detail all right what is happening out here control c and uh, i'm writing it here control v and then i'm writing down the output so this is the output okay so let me explain you this code uh, very much uh, in a very slow manner all right so the value of j the value of j is 1 right so 1 is less than equal to 5 you write this condition j is less than equal to 5 so the answer is true answer t means true right so this condition is true now the value of k is 1 the value of k is 1 so there is another condition here k is less than equal to j so this condition is also true because the value of k is 1 and the value of j is also 1 so this condition is also true so now here print k so let me write here output okay so now you can compare with this because i've already written here so output is one output is one because end is a space so it, the control the control will wait here the print control will wait here now this line has executed this line has executed so uh, sorry this line will execute k plus equal to one so k will become two now from here the control will go back to this right so one uh, so the value of k is 2 
and the value of j is 1 so the value of k is 2 and the value of j is 1 so this condition is false all right when this condition is false the control will come out of the loop and it will execute this statement print print means the control will go here and it will wait for the output right now this line will execute j plus equal to 1 so now the value of j will become 2 then after execution of this line the control will go back to this while loop right the value of j is 1 right the value of j is 2 sorry not 1 the value of j is 2 which is less than equal to 5 so the condition is true right so if the condition is true it will execute this loop right k equal to 1 okay so the value of k will become 1 again so now you it will check this condition k is less than equal to j the value of k is 1 and the value of j is 2 so 1 is less than equal to 2 this condition is true so print k so the value of k is 1 so it will print this one it will print this one right and then after that it will execute k plus equal to 1 so the value of k will become 2 now right then from here the control will go back here so k is less than equal to 2 right the value of j is 2 and the value of k is also 2 so condition is true again so print k so this line will execute print k so this is 2 right and uh, and equal to space so it will be remaining on this condition and then it will uh, remaining on this uh, position and it will go back to y k is less than equal to j right the value of k is so i have not updated this 3 the value of k is 3 3 is less than equal to 2 condition is false so it will come down here it will change the control will change the line here right and then j plus equal to 1 the value of j will become 3 now then it the control will go at the top here so 3 is less than equal to 5 the condition is true again so the k will be reinitialized again with 1 so 1 is less than equal to 3 so 1 is less than equal to 3 so the condition is true again oh i have not written it so condition is true again so it will print the value of k the value of k is 1 okay now it will execute this statement print uh, sorry k plus equal to 1 the value of k will become 2 now the control will go back here so 2 is less than equal to 3 the condition is true again so it will print the value of k which is 2 here which is 2 here right now the value of k will become 3 now okay so 3 is less than equal to 3 so it will print this 3 now right so now the value of k will become 4 so 4 is less than equal to 3 condition is false so it will change the line here and uh, it will update the value of j which is 4 so again it will go back here 4 is less than equal to 5 so k is 1 so again the value of k is 1 so 1 is less than equal to 4 it will print k so it will print this one right then k pl plus equal to 1 so k will become 2 now so again it will go back here 2 is less than equal to 4 2 is less than equal to 4 so it will print 2 so it will print this 2 then the value of k will become 3 then again it will go back here so 3 is less than equal to 4 3 is less than equal to 4 it will print 3 now it will execute this again so the value of k will become 4 so again it will go back here 4 is less than equal to 4 true so it will print this 4 right and k plus equal to 1 so the value of k will become 5 so 5 is less than equal to 4 false so it will come out of the loop it will change the line and wait and the, it will increment the value of j so the value of j will become 5 right so again it will go back here 5 is less than equal to 5 condition is true so k equal to 1 so the value of k is 1 over here so 1 is less than equal to 5 it will print this one right and uh, it will print one space also in between them and then uh, k plus equal to 1 so it will like it will be 2 so again the control will go back here so 2 is less than equal to 5 it will print this 2 right then it will execute this k plus equal to 1 
which is 3. So again, it will go back here. 3 is less than or equal to 5. So it will print this 3 and the value of k will be updated to 4. So 4 is less than or equal to 5. Condition is true. It will print this 4 k plus equal to 1. So k will become uh, 5 and 5 is less than or equal to 5. So it will print this 5. So k plus plus equal to 1 will become 6. So 6 is less than or equal to 5. Condition is false. So control will come down here and the control will come here. Printing control. Then j plus equal to 1. So the value of j will become 6. Then the control will go over here. The 6 is less than or equal to 5. So the condition is false, right? When the condition is false, the control will come over here. Right. So this is the code. This is a code of nested loop. Here you can see that okay, for each value of j, the value of k is executing. For each value of for each value of j, the value of k is executing. Right. For each value of j, the value of k is executing. For each value of j, you can see that k, the value of k is executing right so for each value of this the value of this is executing when the j conditions becomes false then the con then the program is ending over here just uh, the control is going just beyond this while loop the outer loop the control is going beyond the outer loop i hope the idea regarding nested loop is clear to you people because I will continue nested loop in the next class also. So uh, today's class is this much and in the next class also I will continue with the uh, nested for loop and uh, I might uh, start. I might start the next chapter called uh, strings, right? If your nested looping concept will be clear. OK, so uh, in your textbook, right? In your textbook, you will do there there are questions like application based questions right application application based question right in your textbook you have this right application based question okay so you try to solve all the application based questions Okay, try to solve all application based questions, right? And you people will solve programming practice and knowledge based questions. So this is your homework, right? So you people go to the conditional and iterative statement chapter and try to solve these two sections. Okay, and if you have any doubt, you can ask 